kids responded very well, had a little adversity, fought through some stuff, and uh, I was very pleased. Well, when do you think you'll get into pads? Uh, we've got to go shells uh, Monday and Tuesday. We can go pads on Wednesday of next week. What, what, what are you hoping to see in these next few days in shells? Uh, just our our culture established uh, this week. Was, we've really been hammering on perfect effort. Uh, next week, just ironically, it'll be you know, pound fist, and uh, we want to be physical. Pads come on, so we'll just keep hammering uh, where our culture is and uh, see if that shows up on the football field. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Okay, Greg, you're up. Coach, how you doing? Have you um, have you started to get a sense of where your team is strong and weak, sort of the, the areas that you need to focus on and some of the areas where you're already in a pretty good spot? Um, honestly, no. Uh, you know, we've had 12 walkthroughs and two practices in pajamas. So uh, there's been a lot of guys look good in the gym. Uh, it's just camp and T-shirts high tops, there's a lot of kids that look good in you know, underwear for no other better term, you know, just shorts, t-shirts. Um, so we'll, we'll see how physical they are Wednesday. Uh, we're, we're just working so many kids. You know, we're still working four groups, four teams. So you can imagine the chaos uh, when you've got two teams going at the same time, two scales going at the same time. You've got a lot of kids getting in a lot of work. So we can do a great job of evaluating. Uh, obviously, this coaching staff is making us have to grade twice the amount of plays, but uh, we just thought our kids uh, deserved that look, uh, so we can give them the best evaluation possible. So we're not we're not quite there to be able to answer that, but we're getting closer. Hey Chase, you're up. Hey, Coach, we're talking to, obviously, Coach Lunny today. So I want to ask about your offense. I know you guys want to play fast this year, and that was something he mentioned back in March. Um, how would you kind of evaluate the shape your guys have kept themselves in this offseason and what you've seen these first two days, um, especially based on their strength and conditioning these last few weeks? Well, we, uh, before all this you know, pandemic started, we purchased you know, some equipment that would give us great data on uh, how fast our kids are running, how far they're running how long they're running fast. Uh, so we're being very cognizant of that, uh, and how much we're putting on their legs. Coach Follow has done a fantastic job of that as well. Uh, we're in as good a shape as you can be for what these kids have gone through. Uh, and, uh, we're still monitoring it quite a bit, you know, weighing in, weighing out, making sure they're getting three meals a day, making sure they're getting their snack. And, uh, you know, Coach Stein did a great job of, Give me the analogy yesterday of what your hamstrings are like dehydrated. It's like basically bacon, easy to, to brittle. So when you're hydrated, your uh, hamstrings are a lot more uh, healthy, can stay fresh. So we're, we're really teaching, hammering that. Of course, follows on a great job. And our data shows when to back off and when to push it a little bit more. So we're trying to pay attention to that data. A quick second question. I'm not sure if you've been briefed on this or seen this since after practice, but the MAC has canceled fall football. Um, being a similar size conference, does this news kind of concern you guys moving forward, or is it something that you'll take note of as, as you continue to embark on this fall season? Um, you know, our, I know our conference came out yesterday. We're playing eight conference games, and we're trying to get four games of non-conference. So uh, I really don't know much about that at all. I know it's extremely sad for those coaches and those kids, and it's true. Um, you know, I think I think either way, both sides of that are right. there's risk both ways right now. But I also think it's a great risk but for an 18, 22 year old student uh, right now to not play as well. So those decisions be made by guys uh, way smarter than me. You know, football coach, and, you know, the Patriots have one sign on their wall. It's called "Do Your Job." My job is coach the football team. Dr. Compost and President Amy that make those big decisions. As far as my day to day operations, I'm Dan Bellamy, Dick Turner, or our medical people that are monitoring us and making sure what we do um, is the protocol of CBD. And uh, that's, that's what we're doing. Excellent. Thank you, Coach. All right, Greg, you're up. 
Coach, along those same lines, do you still feel very confident there will be a season or some of these warning signs and concerning things and cancellations starting to add up a little bit for you? I'm not a big one guy. Um, there's enough of those guys in the world. Um, yeah, we're playing today. That's all I know right now. So I don't, I really don't go there. It's just, it, it's amazing how many people love to be there, love to stay there. But my mind's just not wired that way. I don't, I don't feel better, but thanks for uh, reminding me one more time. <laughs> well, how about, how about when you've localized it a little bit, as you guys built your camp schedule here, did you try to think about ways to limit the players' opportunity to break the bubble or ways to keep them safe? It seems like, you know, the way it's lined up that you guys have them, you know, moving from thing to thing through the day, and it's kind of, uh, you know, it restricts their ability to potentially to break that bubble you guys are trying to build. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to their individual responsibility. Uh, I can't watch them 24-7, 365. So how much do you really want to play football? How much do you care for your teammate? Uh, because if you really care for your teammate, you won't be out breaking our bubble. We know we've all been tested. We know we all don't have it. Uh, anytime you make contact with anybody else, you don't know if they've got it or not. So we're having to basically bubble ourselves like everybody else is in the country that's respecting uh, what's going on right now. That's all we challenge our players is uh, how bad do you want to play? We, we feel like there'll be enough schools that'll do this correctly, uh, enough players that'll be responsible that we'll be able to find some teams that won't play football this year and our guys can get a great season. Thanks. Okay, JJ, you're up. Coach, we're talking with the uh... Coach Lunny here later on. What what have you seen out of the offense? What what, what does that look like so far through two practices? Well, it, it's hard enough, man, uh, to go eleven on zero. Uh, and so now when you throw in defensive guys over there, there's there's some things you got to overcome. And the offense is always behind the defense a little bit. It's been that way as long as I've been coaching. And every offensive coordinator in the country uh, is going through that. We're different in the sense that we're brand new. We didn't get spring ball. So uh, I would say that's what he would say as well when you ask him. But we've seen a lot of bright signs. Our kids are really trying. They're, they're having a lot of fun. They're working hard. We made some plays today. We gave up some, but we made some. Uh, I'd say it's pretty typical all offenses right now at this time of year what we've been going through. All right.